So, you're thinking of coming to Sri Lanka, but you're not really sure what to fully expect. Woohoo! Oh, this is exactly why we came up north. Maybe you're looking for all of the famous Instagram hotspots. Or maybe you're looking for adventures on the roads less traveled. But don't worry, whatever it is that you're looking for, we're going to share with you our honest experiences in this wild and colorful country. And because we are the budgeteers and we specialize in having bigger and better adventures on less money, we're doing this trip on less than $1,000 each. So sit down and relax and join us on this epic journey around Sri Lanka. Okay, Ty, do the honors. Roll that intro. Woo! Boom! Series 4 was made possible thanks to Sri Lankan Airlines, providing convenient and cheap connections to the island. Book your flights with Sri Lankan Airlines. We're also brought to you by Wondergo, the must-have app for any digital nomad. Discover destinations, workspaces, accommodation and much more. Download it for free from the App Store today. In this episode, we are going to head to the popular backpacker town in the mountains called Ella. We have heard a lot of good things about this place and we wanted to check it out and see how beautiful the scenic train rides through the mountains really are. But after traveling the unseen and untouristy parts of Sri Lanka, we're now 16 days further from when we started our trip in Colombo on day one. And we have now made it into the most touristy hotspot of the entire island. We've already shown you in our last episode the most popular sights to see in Kandy City. And I've even discovered a crazy temple by chance in the area. Yes, come on. No, I'm skipping that. No, Ty, come on. <gasps> you can't look at the stairs. There's a gap there's in the stairs. There's a gap. Why don't trust this stuff? But the real highlight was our trek up Adam's Peak, where we climbed the high mountain during the night to see the sunrise. So far, our budget lasted very well outside of the tourist area, but now in the popular traveler spots, everything is costing us twice, three times, even ten times as much as in other areas. So we were really fearful to lose the last half of our initial thousand dollars right here. But since we want to show you all the beautiful things and activities of Sri Lanka in this series, we were determined to find a way. As we always do here at The Budgeteers, we find a way to do more with less. So after our adventure tracking up Adam's Peak early this morning, we got in our tuk-tuk and made our way along the mountains towards the town of Ella and decided to stop along the way if we saw something interesting. And as you know, when you're driving a tuk-tuk through Sri Lanka, it does not take you a long time to see something interesting. Doing 
But the Hindu religion is the most diverse, the most original, strange, amazing religion. Because you just don't know what's going on from one day to the next. And it clears and you've got the straight road and can carry on on our way to the like next destination. Happened. What was that? <laughs> and that kind of thing happens quite often here in Shrine. But it won't happen if you take the bus or the train. The train. We messed up a lot. Yes. These cultural sites you just wouldn't get to see if you took the train all the way to Ella. The famous train ride from Kandy to Ella is really popular with both tourists and Instagrammers. But as you can see, having the tuk-tuk was still providing us with amazing views too. And we could all just enjoy these awesome little surprises of Sri Lankan customs. And since we could just go at our own slow and steady pace before heading to Ella itself, we decided to make a detour and go all the way to the highest village of Sri Lanka called Nuwara Elia. It took us a while to make our way up the mountains, but we could feel this place was something special because we went from a very hot and a very humid climate to a mild and cooler climate high up the mountains. This area is very famous for its tea plantations and we saw a lot of them. But once we arrived in town, we still needed to find a place to stay. And as always, we haven't booked anything in advance. So we went around town and stopped everywhere where you could see to barter for the best price. And that's how we got lucky and found this little bargain. Alright, so... Um, we just arrived in... Nuara Elia. Nuara Elia. And we drove around. This is more on the touristy route, and I think the rest of our trip is going to be on the touristy route, so we're going to try to figure out some couch surfing uh, for upcoming accommodations. Um, we went to one hostel, and they were going to charge us 9,000 rupees for two nights. Expensive. And then we came over to this one. We found this one on the road. And uh, I uh, budgeted us a room, a private room, for 6000 for two nights. So that's about 30 USD or $5 each per night. So pretty good. Which is about how much we can afford. And we have the whole place to sell. Yeah, we're the only people staying here. It's like a private cottage villa house. Private villa. Oh, villa. Uh, I really like, like this town. We're like Kara and Nate. We we'll show you around this villa. town properly. <laughs> We'll show you around this town properly uh, soon. Uh, we're still a bit tired from the last episode when we climbed that giant mountain. That was this morning. We climbed the, the biggest mountain this morning, so we're and a little we bit haven't, tired. And we haven't eaten lunch yet, so... We haven't eaten yet. That's a crime. <laughs> creamy nail. Cre we need creamy to change nail. that right now. Sorry, I lost my balance. So with Lena almost fainting from hunger, we quickly got some cheap curry buffets in town. And whilst we were in town, we also bought some extra supplies in the local supermarket and headed back to our gorgeous villa. We still couldn't believe just how we'd managed to blag ourselves our very own budgeteer's crib. And for just $5 per person, we had a huge private room with two big beds and it certainly was a change to the tiny room we had last night at the base of Adam's Peak. But since we were absolutely exhausted and we had this place to ourselves, we just wanted to chill out and get some much needed rest. So we settled in for a lazy evening together so we could start off tomorrow completely refreshed. Hello. Good morning, Lena is here. Hi. Ties is in the Tuk Tuk setting up. We're about to leave and explore newer Elia. But we want to introduce you to a friend of ours. Come here, my friend. This is Aninda. Hello. Uh, we have bumped into him quite a few times. We saw you in Colombo. Yeah, Colombo and, and Trincomalee in the East Coast. In the Trincomalee where we did the whale watching. And we just want to ask you, because he's going to come out and explore newer Elia with us today. How have you found Sri Lanka? Because he's been here the same amount of time as we have, but he's been having a different route. So yeah, what do you think of, of Sri Lanka in general? Do you recommend it? 
I think Sri Lanka has been an amazing place so far. Uh, you get a lot of Southeast Asia vibes, like accessibility to travel. The distances are really short, which is awesome. And if you're solo travel like I am, you meet a lot more other backpackers as well. So you're never really alone, and there's beautiful places to see. If you like mountains, we got it. If you like beaches, it's got it. Tea plantations, name it. It's got everything. Yeah, sweet. And uh, oh yeah, we're heading actually to the touristy place tomorrow, Ella. So we'll see what that's like. Are you guys ready? Yeah. We're ready to go. Were okay. We, did you get our dancing in the back? How could we miss we're, your big we're bum? Doing some backup dancing. <laughs> Shake the dog dog. The plan is that we're gonna get in old uh, Zita, Mama Zita, and just explore Nira Elia today. There's a bunch of really nice viewpoints, some waterfalls, and some adventures to be had on a budget. Let's do it! So we all got in our tuk-tuk and drove with the four of us up the mountains. As far as our tuk-tuk could take us and parked up. Because our only goal was to catch a view of the highest tea plantation of Sri Lanka called Elephant Tea Estate. We thought it was a good idea to stretch our legs again and get our blood pumping. So we made a rough climb upwards and carefully made our way through the beautiful tea fields. And our efforts were rewarded with gorgeous views. here um, and we found a nice little spot up there where that tree is and we were just hanging out and taking all of this in um, it's stunning eh? super beautiful out here we're the only ones uh, the villagers were super fine with us coming up here whoa <laughs> and it's Do all it. natural <laughs> yeah so we are headed to <laughs> Careful right there. So we're headed to a waterfall and then after a water <laughs> We're doing great. <laughs> well, Aninda is going to take us to a really good lunch spot that he's discovered. <laughs> One dollar all you can eat buffet vegetarian food. Yeah. So, so, we will see you if we survive this downhill battle. We'll see you there. Ah! <laughs> We're gonna eat loads. We're so hungry. This is the buffet. Nice. Let's go, guys. Oh, you can feel the heat coming through the metal. We have. Oh, this one, carrot, carrot, curry. Yes, please. Okay, so we got poppadom, dal, green bean curry, carrot curry, coconut sambal with green chili, and why not a little dried super hot chili to go with it. Obviously some white rice. And this is all you can eat, right? All you can eat. So this is just plain number one. <laughs> bon appetit. How is it, guys? Really good. My favorite, one of my favorite places I've ever been in so far. My plate is already <laughs> yes, the food was delicious and we obviously stuffed our faces several times. Because for one dollar and ten cents, you can go wrong. And we know the restaurant decor might not look very cozy and clean, but we can assure you we had no problems at all. 
Here in Nuara Elia, the tap water is drinkable and everything is all very clean and even western. With pubs, golf courses and full of English colonial buildings like this post office. It's very funny to check out and Paddy almost felt like he was back home in England. But with our lunch devoured, we went in search for that big waterfall. Okay, so we've uh, made our way up a dodgy, bobbly, bumpy road. That was and horrible. It was very, very dangerous. And then we had to walk about 10 minutes. And we're here at Lover's Leap Waterfall. And it's. I love you! <laughs> And uh, as you can see, it's very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mean. Maybe because think... it's dry season, give it a little bit of a break. Basically, if you're coming up to this waterfall, Lover's Leap waterfall, uh, wait until rainy season, because it's just not cool. It was only a five minute hike, so mm. not too much energy to get up here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm being harsh on it. Yeah, I just you can't swim in it, that's why. Yeah, I did want to go for a dip, but... Um, so what we're going to do now, since it's the afternoon, yeah. and we actually have a picnic ready, we're going to go down into town and go to Gregory Lake Park, where we can put down our little picnic blanket and crack open some beers. And enjoy the afternoon before we head to Ella tomorrow. Yes, we really just wanted to relax and take in the views one last time. This region has plenty of other waterfalls to check out, but we just really love the chill atmosphere of this town. And as we drove down, we bought some beers and some sandwiches, and we set up our picnic by the lake. The side of the lake where we didn't have to pay an entrance fee. There's an entrance over there, and it's 200 rupees to enter. Um, but we just parked up our tuk tuk right here on this side of the lake, and uh, you know we saw this big green patch right right by the water, and decided to set up camp here. So we're gonna listen to some music and just hang out for the rest of the night. Enjoy the sunset. Yeah. Not bad spot, eh, buddy? Oh, it's good. Got some beers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Here's to a lovely day in Nuwaya Elia. New Warrior Elia. New Elia. No. Elia. That's the one. Cheers. One more time. <laughs> because I love you guys so much. Uh, no better way to end a lovely day than a picnic by the lake. I love picnics. <laughs> Have you heard Luis Fonsi's new song? Oh, he's still recorded. <laughs> Was the end to a lovely chill evening or so we thought because Sri Lanka seems to always have a surprise for us okay so we were at the lake having a picnic you can't see my face right now that's okay you can hear us probably you can hear us it's dark there's like a bus rave going on so we left the <laughs> on the street park I got lights I got lights and oh he has light and we're going to the to the bus rave look at this look at this <laughs> there's a rave going on behind us <laughs> So while Paddy was showing off his dance skills like some crazy Quasimodo, we were really shocked and wanted to check out this big party bus. This bus is insane. And soon we joined this mad dance party too. It turns out it was a family party with even the little kids who were raving away as well. And some of them even got their breakdance moves out. Well, 
Paddy found a couple of uncles who were keen to let us taste some Sri Lankan rum. And so we stayed and partied a bit longer. Until suddenly a big jeep turned up. So we think the cops are here. They're probably here just to drink with us actually. The cops didn't seem to bother at all, so we all partied further into the night. The next morning we had to leave our villa early and get on the road fast. But as we drove, the weather kept getting worse. And so we got a refreshing rain shower to wake us up. And even though the weather was gloomy, our tuk-tuk always gets us in a party mood and our spirits up. We didn't have much time though, because we had a pressing appointment this morning at the train station in Nanaoya. Because we were going to get on the train to Ella to see what this famous train ride is really like. And luckily Tuk Tuk Rental had arranged for a driver to pick up our Zita. So we could jump on the first train out in the morning to experience the most scenic part of the train ride before it got busy. And the tickets, well, once we got here, they were there was only third class tickets left, so we just bought what was what was available, and it cost us 140 rupees each. So the last three hours, 140 rupees, third class. So we weren't mistaken, this was indeed the first train to Ella, but it wasn't empty at all and as you can see it was already packed full with local people and backpackers. And everyone was running around trying to find a way to fit on the crowded train. Train's here and it's completely packed. We tried all the wagons, but the only option left was to jump into the first class carriage and find a place to stow away and hope we wouldn't get kicked off the train. We couldn't go into first class as the tickets cost almost $30 instead of just the 80 cents that we had just paid. Good enough, eh? Next, day, next to the toilet, that's how we roll. India. <laughs> Very familiar here. <laughs> We're just going to keep quiet, try not to make any commotion. Keep our heads down. And if the train starts to leave, we have achieved our mission, which is a nice area next to the sea, so next to the door, sorry, so we can feel the wind, get some good views. Yeah. Um, but for Going now, well. I'm really nervous that we're going to get caught out. So. We got on the train, that's the mm -hmm. most important part. Exactly. <laughs> we were thinking we might miss it. So we were nervously waiting for the train to leave and really hoping nobody would notice us and kick us off. But luckily the train started moving and soon we hung out the door. Eager to see all the scenic views over the mountains.
At our doorway spot, we even had a better view than first class. We had a panoramic wagon with big windows. But we enjoyed the fresh mountain air and we soaked up the amazing sights. But our fun didn't last long and the next stop we were all caught. Uh, this is the glass ticket. Yes. This is an uh, observation compartment and by this ticket you can go inside this. We're not going inside. Uh, get out at the next station. So with only 10 minutes left to the next station we were thrown out, out of the first class wagon and were hoping to get onto another wagon if there was any space left. And after a lot of squeezing we made it back on the train. So it's the next station now and uh, we made our way back into third class. Third class? Second class? Third class. And uh, the most popular one. What's he saying? This is what's going on. We're trying to figure out a place to sit. Anyway, a bunch of uh, bunch of locals, people got off at that station, so we managed to uh, get a place. Ties are somewhere in the back. Managed to budget ourselves some seats in the aisle. <laughs> Any special feeling? Ah. Uh, Regret. I'm joking. No, no. This is great. We've we've travelled in much worse trains than this. Ah, I see. <laughs> this is fancy for us. But Patty spoke too soon, because in the next three hours, not a single inch of space opened up, and we had no view out of the windows whatsoever. And so while we were slowly boiling in this hot train, Ties, who was stuck at the doorway, wasn't lucky either because everybody on the train was pushing around so that they could each take their Instagram picture as well. So after what seemed like an eternity, we finally arrived to Ella and we were more than happy to get off of the train and eager to get our tuk-tuk back. Anyway, we got here in one piece and yeah. we... We gotta go find our couch surfing, which apparently is in a guest house, so it's a little weird. Yeah, we'll and see how that situation works And we don't out. have our tuk-tuk, so we have to get a tuk-tuk there, Ooh. which is gonna feel really dirty. It's gonna feel like we're cheating on we're Zeta. We're cheating on Zeta. Alright then, oh. let's go. Vamanos. You wouldn't want to miss it. But since we needed to save our money, we opted to take the bus because tuk-tuk prices here were ridiculously pricey. So after half an hour on the local bus with the little school kids, we made it to our host guest house, which was in a little village just outside of Ella. And we were welcomed by our host Gobi and our tuk-tuk Zita, which had been dropped off here. Gobi was still finishing up his guest house and was willing to let us stay for free in this private room. Which was perfect and we were really grateful but also really hungry. Luckily there was a kotu place right next door and we filled our bellies with some delicious freshly cut kotus. Totally recommend you try it. But before the sun went down, Gobi wanted to take us to a secret waterfall he knew of. So he guided us through the mountains and across a little river uphill. But it turns out that it wasn't as much of a secret as we had hoped. Ella is a popular backpacker hotspot, so it wasn't a big surprise to find other travelers here. But we actually didn't mind because the cool water was the refreshing shower that we desperately needed. And this place was perfect to just hang around and chill. And we were really looking forward to see what else Ella had to offer us in the next few days. Thank you. 
Alright, good morning. We're doing a wee trick today. <laughs> Obviously we are just a big Adam's Peak and here in Ella there's actually a little Adam's Peak to climb. Um, I think we've heard it's only about a 30 minute trek. So yeah. we're heading to do that this morning. Get our calves working again. Yeah, doing some activities, working off those um, all those beers. All the, all the coffee we had yesterday. Little Adam's Peak, and uh, the walk up here is pretty easy. There's a staircase, and uh, once you get to the top, there's a lovely little Buddha statue. And we're very lucky because there's a big group of puppies there. It's very cute. And look, here's one of the puppies. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, a very nice uh, little hike to do to start your day if you come to Ella. There are like three peaks along the way. Um, you come up to the first one and there's two Buddhas, and then you can keep going. And I would say the best view is from the last one, the furthest one. So definitely if you come up here, make your way back there. For sure, it is budgeteers approved, it costs you nothing, only takes you half an hour to come up here. And we're going to our next spot right now. I'm gonna check out the Nine Arches Bridge and see if it's actually worthy or not, and if it's secretly Instagram cringy. So let's check it out. Nine Arches Bridge is just outside of Ella and it's one of the most famous tourist spots in Sri Lanka. Just like Sigiriya, it's an Instagram hotspot. And we were really fearful that this famous bridge might just be another overcrowded and overhyped place. But we made the walk down to properly review it. Great news, we see the Nine Arches. We've spotted them. As you can see, this bridge is actually really beautiful and it did have something special to it. Of course, there were still a lot of tourists here taking photos and selfies. But it was not too overcrowded and luckily it wasn't crawling with salesmen everywhere. So we were really nicely surprised for a change and the best thing of all, it was totally free. say I'm actually impressed this place is built up hyped up so you yeah. always expect it to be not very good not worth it yeah. and it is lovely I mean don't get me wrong in it's, England it is we just have, a bridge <laughs> yeah in England we have probably a hundred of these types of bridges but no yeah, one makes but it's a fuss beautiful. but it is no no it is beautiful it is beautiful it, and it's mm. tall <laughs> and made of bricks <laughs> and good there observation are... <laughs> And there are nine arches, I counted them to make sure. <laughs> Alright, should we do lunch? Yeah. Yes, let's go. Alright. Alright. Through the really sore, scratchy. Bushes. We're gonna take some pictures here and Ow. get lunch. Ow. And make our way back. Ow. 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 Oh. And so we made our way up towards downtown Ella in search for the cheapest food we could find. Okay 
guys. We're now in downtown Ella and we walked around for eight trying to find a reasonably, a reasonably priced restaurant, which is really difficult to find because most restaurants charge you six to seven hundred rupees for a just standard rice and curry. But Patty's idea here was to just walk a bit out of town and find a restaurant that's maybe not as fancy looking. But we found this nice vegetable curry for this for just 250 rupees each. How was it, babe? Looks amazing. It looks amazing. Yeah, with uh, Ella, when we got here, we were a little bit kind of shocked at the price of food in the middle of the downtown there. 400, 600, 700 for a rice and curry, which is literally four times more expensive than most places. But if you're willing to put up with the noisy buses and the loud trucks whizzing past, uh, this guy here, 250 rupees for a veggie, uh, veggie curry and rice. And uh, you cannot go wrong. We're getting some weird looks from like, from uh, tourists. We're like, oh my god, you're on the street. But look how good this food is. It's and it's, no curry. it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, look, this is a whole chunk of mango curried. So it's nice and spicy and sweet, obviously. And yeah, okay, we're eating on the street, but like, get over it. This is how you eat in Sri Lanka if you want to have delicious, local, cheap food. So of course we filled our bellies and in the next few days we just took some time to take care of some things. We gave our little tuk-tuk a proper checkup and a good greasing since our cheeky little Zeta loves a good old greasing. And with new oil and air in her tires, we continued to explore around Ella and we got greeted with amazing, beautiful views everywhere we went. We found more waterfalls, and we just couldn't resist to just jump in once again. But whilst we were swimming, our stuff almost got stolen by crazy monkeys. There's monkeys everywhere, just waiting for you to look away, and they're just like snatching people's stuff. Crazy. Despite the higher number of tourists, we really love the area here in Ella. And we just drove around, chilled out, and loved life. We even treated ourselves to some delicious coconut juices and some other beverages too. And in the evening, we even met up with some subscribers and hung out with friends and just chilled out and got a peek into Ella's nightlife. But the next evening, we came up with a new challenge. We were gonna hike up the biggest mountain in this area called Ella's Rock and try and camp up there under the stars. So we made our way up as far as our tuk-tuk was able to because we were gonna need to carry a lot of stuff with us. Up she goes, up she goes, up she goes, up she goes! Hey. Alright, so we have just driven up Ella's Rock uh, as far as we can and now we're going to head upwards trekking. Um, going camping. Yeah. Should we show them what we got in the cooler? Three guesses <laughs> as to what we have in the cooler. Ta -da! Raisin cookies, crackers, bananas, rice and curry, more cookies and beers. Big Cold lion beers. beers. Thank you very much. It took us uh, a bit of effort to be this well prepared, but I think we got it all. Yeah, and we're gonna start trekking up because we have very few hours left of sunlight, yeah. and we need to get up there. We need to find Sharon and the guys, and we need to set up our tent. Yeah, and actually find a camp spot. Yeah. Bye, Zia. We bye, love bye, you. Bye. Zia. See you tomorrow. Uh, so we set off on what we thought was the path to Ella's Rock, but it just led us to an old lady's house. Luckily, the old lady showed us the way to the right track where we got a view of the town of Ella. This grandmother must have thought that we were completely crazy tourists because we were carrying so much stuff all the way up the mountain and back 
just to go camping for one single night. And after an hour of trekking, sweating, and pushing ourselves up the steep hill, we knew we were in for a really intense workout. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Travel when you're young. Because <laughs> there's no way you could lug up 12 cans of beer and a bunch of curry up a mountain when you're 65. Here, here. So we tried to keep a steady pace and kept climbing up step by step. With the summit just half an hour away, we got our strength together for a final push upwards. And so we made it to one of the many viewpoints on the top of Ella's Rock. Just to catch a last glimpse of the valley far, far below. It took us a lot of effort to get up here, but we were so happy to be able to share a cold beer together. But there wasn't much time to hang around. The last daylight was fading very quickly, so we had to quickly find a flat piece of land for us to put our tent up. Hey. Nice. Woo We've got the tent. Aye, laddies, aye. And it wasn't until it was completely dark and our tent was already set up that our friends finally arrived at the top with us. And so after they set their camp up, together we made a big fire to warm ourselves up and cook something. Because after carrying up all those beers and our camping gear, we were starving. And after our delicious curries under the stars, we celebrated our climb even more by sharing our cold beers with this awesome group of friends. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Wave. Oh, oh. fire. Nice. Cheers, guys. Right. We Cheers. made it up the mountain. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, it tastes so good. Alright, who's going down for the next round? <laughs> Ball shops will be open for another. <laughs> and for the rest of the night, we sat by the campfire, enjoying each other's company and this amazing camping spot. And because we were in such an amazing spot, we did not want to miss the sunrise. So we woke up really, really early. And even though it was really cold, we made ourselves to the cliff on the east. Nestled in our sleeping bags, we waited for the first sun rays to shine over the mountain. And although we were really sleepy and in need of a coffee, this magical sunrise was definitely the highlight of our amazing time in Ella and a nice and chill opportunity to end this action-packed episode. Hello! We have just woken up to see the sunrise. Um, last night was fun. Yeah. We um, made a campfire and ate some dinner. Ate some marshmallows. It was cute. Yeah, it was really some nice. by the fire. And then sleeping in the tent wasn't too bad last night. I slept fine. So yeah. The whole surrounding areas here are beautiful. And uh, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, in the next one, we're going to try and see some elephants. We haven't seen any elephants yet, except yeah. for the one that was chained up in Sigaria, which doesn't count. Yeah, it's gonna be our last day in the mountains today. So it's gonna be our last yeah. day of driving through these amazing views. Yeah, we can see the plains. The crazy that roads. We yeah, we can see the plains, and we're heading over yonder. And yeah, 
See you guys. I'm gonna pull the ties. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Budgeteers. If you like this episode, please consider giving us a like and subscribe. It would really help us out. And don't forget to turn that bell on so you never miss an episode. If you're planning to go traveling yourself, do consider bringing your very own Budgeteers t-shirt. We have our own online shop with many cool designs. And as you can tell, we Budgeteers are really skeptical of famous tourist spots or cringy hotspots for that matter. But what places have you visited that are up to the hype? We're curious to know your opinion. In the meanwhile, we'll just leave you with this teaser for our next episode, where we do two safaris in two different national parks. Apparently there's a leopard right in front of us. But we don't know if it's moved, we don't know if it's hiding, or that they're just really hard to see. But this is what we're looking at. Made it. Can you see it? But.